going on? We're going to AirPlay. Um, we're gonna see a whole bunch of really cool people like uh, Milo Yiannopoulos and Alan Bakari and Christina Hoff Summers and, and a whole bunch of other really awesome people and uh, we're gonna go there see if we can't hang out with them for a bit and, and uh, watch the panel discussion and participate from the audience as much as we can. But that's what we're gonna do today and then later tonight we're gonna all be hooking up with all of the pro Gamergate people at a GG in Miami gathering later tonight. I'm not sure where, I'm just gonna go where they tell me and and hopefully they'll tell me to go there and not to hell or someplace like that. So there you go, that's what we're doing. Airplane is really a series of three debates. The first is the shortest, and it's right now. We're going to attempt to answer this crucial question. What the hell is Gamergate, and why should I give a crap about it anyway? So what is Gamergate? What is all of this hullabaloo about? Um, it is about a, uh, a consumer revolt against uh, a particular pattern in journalism over the last 10, 15 years that's just gotten worse and worse and worse of uh, cronyism and nepotism between journalists and game developers and uh, you know people who really shouldn't be having personal, friend, very friendly relationships. And on top of that, there seems to be over the last several years a uh, uh, an increasingly uh, pushy agenda, uh, a lot of agenda pushing. Um, for social justice values, uh, feminism, and uh, anti-racism, and all kinds of stuff like that. And I think a lot of people in the uh, game consumer community uh, feel like they're being preached to, and they feel like they're being told they're horrible people to, you know, for liking, um, for liking this game or that game. You know, I wouldn't have thought it would last this long. It has lasted in part because of the, because the media has been so reckless and irresponsible and failed to explain it to readers. And this is a very, uh, it's distressing to, to the people who are part of a movement that care about games, that care about the, the, the false idea that it's a den of misogyny, the games, this idea that games are sexist. Games, it's like saying books are sexist or, or, or television dramas are sexist. There, there, what are you talking about? There are so many, there's such a diversity. You can find everything in games now. <laughs> so these, these generalizations are absurd. So the general charges and the particular charges are baseless. I, I guess I'd hope today we had more of a chance to explain that. I mean, and the, these reporters may not have understood that we haven't had People who are sympathetic to game have not really had much of a chance to explain it. So. Apparently, uh, the organizers have uh, they've said that they've prepared for any eventuality for uh, the cruel and tragic shenanigans of uh, social justice types um, to do things like uh, cause uh, noisy disruptions, uh, pull fire alarms, things like that. Um, they said that they've planned for that and they have security in place to prevent that. Um, so I'm hoping that it goes off okay, uh, and considering that we have a panel of very reasonable people, um, uh, most of them uh, write, uh, you know, for very, very normal mainstream publications, um, even if they choose to work primarily for conservative uh, websites, they, they also do other work for, you know, uh, websites like Time and, and Newsweek and stuff like that. So. Um, hopefully it'll be just a very, very nice uh, discussion and uh, uh, an informative one and not a loud, rowdy, angry, disrupty one. So, there you go. Uh, we've been evacuated. Apparently a credible bomb threat was sent into the police department. This is of course the second bomb threat that's been sent in the last six months for an event I've been involved in and probably more than the tenth, I guess, for any Gamergate event. It so, happens typically, I think, when events are going particularly well and the opposition is uh, getting upset that we might be dropping some home truths. Oh dear, we've had a bomb threat. 
and uh, the, apparently it's not possible to have a civil discussion about Gamergate. And they, uh, the opponents seem very determined to prevent that from happening. And I think if anyone would watch the session this morning and this afternoon, you'll see why. Because I think the myth about Gamergate can only be sustained if gamers, Gamergaters remain silent, are kept, uh, are, are silenced. I just the thing about it is the more it get the more this gets airplay the more it gets talked about the more people who don't know what game what Gamergate is will get to know what it is and what it isn't and that's really why I wanted to be a part of it let them know that this is about gaming and about ethics in gaming media not about all this hate and all this nonsense what people who don't know about are trying to you know portray on behalf of a lot of friends thank you so much for all the things you've said on the internet you've been a great inspiration a lot of them. I didn't expect you to be here, and I was actually surprised. Yeah, no, I was like, it was just sort of a last-minute thing. We did a fundraiser to send me down, and and uh, they just figured they wanted the radio show. We they, we wanted someone down here, and they picked me, and so I was like, okay. I'm so sorry about what happened to you and the, the Honey Badgers at Calgary. Oh, I yeah, you know, it was sort of one of those things. It's like it's like the bomb threat, you know, predictable, right? So. Well, the, uh, but, uh, one thing I have to tell you, though, like, I hadn't been drawing for almost 10 years when that happened. I started drawing just because I had to get it out there to tell you how much I supported you guys. I, I was the one who drew, um, um, uh, forgot her name, but the name escapes you right now. She's a cosplay girl. Uh, oh, uh, and, and a chair. And a chair. I, drew, I drew her. I also drew Vivian Gag, and they're trying to suppress her speech because... I, I just had to do it. So I hadn't drawn for 10 years, but you guys you guys gave me the courage to do it because I wanted to support you. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Give me another hug. Thank you so much, Here's the idea. The TV cameras are here. I want to show them that a bomb threat does not shut down an event. And I don't think it's a better place to continue a conversation after a bomb threat than by trespassing in a house in plain sight of the cops. You want to know what happened? Anyone speak Spanish? Who needs to know what? It's the reporter needs to know. You speak Spanish? Uh, see, you always find your Please let them know what happened with the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a point. I'm, I've been working in Afghanistan. I'm a senior advisor for the last seven years. And this happens all the time. We get bomb threats all the time. But people leave. And this is really an inspiration to see that people are staying. Usually a bomb threat cancels everything. Yes. People go about their business and they leave, but you have decided to stay here and continue because you're devoted to your mission and you're passionate about your craft. So that is that is remarkable. In other places where this happens every day, everyone leaves and goes home and they hope that uh, they stay alive. That way we'll let us have our cars. How was your experience sitting outside in the heat? Well, as a native Floridian, it's nothing new, but I typically spend most of my time behind a computer desk. <laughs> so yeah, not in the heat exactly, but yeah. um... But not that we're strangers to Florida weather. As a native Albertan, it was absolute freaking hell, and I would rather sit for that length of time in 30 below weather. That's 30 Celsius for you. Yankee rubes. <laughs> Learn how to convert. <laughs> right across from a cop car, we took over a condemned house, and in the carport, continued the journalism and Gamergate conversation under the theory that the bomb threat was illegal, crashing into a no trespassing condemned home is illegal, therefore they cancel each other out, <laughs> and it becomes totally legal. Perfect logic. That conversation continued until just now. They're going to be shutting this place down because uh, I think this place hates me and we're not going to ever be able to come back here again. The guy up there in the booth, his name is John Smith. It's not his real name. I don't even really know his real name. I don't know why I want to know his real name. You don't. All right. Um, so when, he, when he reached out to me when I started this, 
had said that he wanted to help. He sounded like a good guy. I, you know, as a journalist, you get to know people are kind of bullshit artists. So I said, yeah, sure, help out. Well, that caused such a Gamergate catastrophe stir of excitement that Oliver had to have an emergency stream to vet this dude. Well, it turned out that all the technology that was done today on multi-camera secure live stream was done by a 19-year-old sitting up in that booth. Right now we're just finishing up or we're in the later hours of, of GG in Miami like quite a few people have kind of filtered out for the day uh, you still got quite a few of the panelists still here uh, obviously quite a few drinks have been in and, and people are, uh, are getting a little loose but they're, they're still having a good time you know that bomb threat I don't know why anyone would do that especially after um, the things that happened with uh, GG in Washington or in GG in DC and uh, you know, just how negative that was for the opposition. And then for it to happen here, again, in the middle of this, two journalists, now they're going to report on it, bare minimum, on their own behalf, you know? And uh, I just don't think that was beneficial for them. And I don't know why it happened. I think things went incredibly well. Um, I think the most important thing is that the conversation between Gamergate and the SPJ happened, and there was a meeting of minds and understanding of the ideas and the issues and everything that went down. And I think that the conversation is finally moving forward. So from the very beginning, like the moment I called Koretsky, uh, I had no idea what to expect. I thought uh, maybe I was just going to pick the speakers or I was going to, uh, you know, maybe be there in person and uh, do have some small part in it. But then uh, as I got farther into it, I got more involved and I uh, was speaking to more people and I was starting to get on streams and doing interviews and talking with people. and it. I just kind of got swept up in it all to the point where I was bringing my own personal computer to make sure all of it worked and it was this crazy thing. I'm, I'm really glad the talk just happened because it, that was my number one goal was making sure these people could get here, that they would be safe, that they would be able to talk about these issues and that there would be some productive element to it. And that's what happened. I feel like the optimist in me is saying that things are going to get a lot better, but uh, with the history of uh, these so just people and Atheism Plus and all of these other communities they infest. It's, it's kind of this continuous battle and Gamergate, a lot of people say Gamergate has taken on this sort of uh, watchdog mentality at this point and I, I think that's going to be true for the next coming years. However many people we can keep around to keep doing that, it's an important job and I think it, as long as people are there to do it, it's, uh, that's the important part. Because Gamergate is part of gaming, I don't believe it's going anywhere. I think it's going to continue being the force that, continue, that, you know, that allows people to talk about media ethics and gaming in general for the foreseeable future. I don't see it going anywhere at all. So, and that's pretty much what I, what I think. I think the more it gets discussed in the media, the more people get to talk about it, the better it is so that it's not always a one-sided debate and people don't get to control the narrative just because they can.